So hey, how are you doing today? Happy Friday. We're back and as I promised, we're going to do another patina video. It seems like nobody ever gets tired of patina videos and it's so cool because there are so many ways that you can add color and life to brass stampings, whether they be old ones or ones you get from me or just whatever you have, you can really, really change it up with mixed media product. Of course, the ones you get from me are rich low brass, which means they're 85% copper and 15% <coughs> zinc. And that's actually the best kind of brass for a plater to use. So that's why we carry it, because we have a lot of our things custom plated. But it's also the best kind of brass for you to work with and add color to. Um, there are other types of brass that might be better for other applications, but for this one, what you want is rich, low brass. And that's what you can always expect at bsuboutiques.com. So this week, um, we're going to try and do some darker finishes. Before with the Perfect Pearls, we have done lighter, pretty, shabby chic type finishes. This time we're going to go for kind of a chocolate kiss, choxy look. You, you might remember my old choxy plating and my chocolate kiss plating, which was the bomb. Um, we're also going to go for a Russian gold plated look, which was also, <coughs> excuse me, a finish that I carried hmm, since 2004 and I had to quit carrying it last year because it just seemed that the plater's assistants couldn't understand it and, and it just was coming out too inconsistent. So hey, we're going to have to do our own. And basically all Russian gold plate is, is our satin matte gold finish, which is a, it's a very rich 18 karat gold precious metal finish with a brown antique over top. And I found if you use cappuccino perfect pearls and some embossing ink, you can pretty much get it. Because I have some old pieces here that we can compare to and I'm pretty close. So come on over here because you know I got this Tennessee to act so I'll shut up now. I'm sure by now you want to get over here and see how I do it. So let's do it. Okay guys, so this is the finished bracelet that we had from last week that I colorized using cappuccino, perfect pearls, and embossing ink. And I also bought it up a little bit with some, um, I think this is called copper bronze or something. Perfect bronze, that's it. Okay, this was such a popular project. We still have the filigree, we still have the dragonfly centerpiece with these pieces on the sides. We ran out of so I just did want to mention to you really quick today that in case you wanted to go back to last week's video and you were not able to get these pieces to finish your bracelet, we have everything else. Um, you could use this one, which is F I L O six two three eight. This one will work too. It's the same dimensions, forty by thirty seven doesn't have quite the same look, but you can do it. It'll work. I'm not going to have these for probably two, three weeks, unfortunately. It takes time. You have to have them made. So in the meantime, we have a lot of FIL 06238 if you want to give that a go. It's actually one of my favorite filigrees. Someday I'm going to show you how to make a, a collar necklace out of these, and you're just going to be in love. Anyway, okay, enough of that. So we wanted to talk about getting this color onto raw brass. You can really save a lot of money when you work with raw brass and you can truly make it your own more so than anything else um, because with rich low brass it takes color really well and you can use so many different media. We've talked about them. We've talked about gilder's paste. We've talked about swell again. We've talked about vintage inks um, which are kind of like a metal paint really. Um, there's another one called Dr. P.H. Martin which is awesome too but it's not something I've ever sold. Um, I like it. Um, also just your plain craft store acrylic inks you can experiment with and one color especially that you want to keep in your arsenal is burnt umber and we're going to do 
eventually a video based on burnt umber and what you can do with it. Today we're just using the, the raw brass and this is none of this that you can see here on my table is acrylic paint. Okay, none of it. Um, what we're doing today is perfect pearls. Okay, and that is an embossing type powder made by Ranger. We carry it at Bisu Boutiques. We have the small pots and then we have the full sets. If you're going to buy a full set and you want to do the kind of work we're doing today, I would buy the metallic set, which will get you four pots and I think a brush and a um, little thing of perfect medium, which is you need the ink to um, get the stick. Okay. One thing I sadly found out, Perlex will not work for this application. Perlex is great on polymer clay. Perlex and Perfect Pearls is not, not, not the same product. Okay, Perfect Pearls for metal, Perlex is great on polymer clay. Perfect Pearls works on polymer clay too, but um, Perlex, I bought some thinking that uh, I might be able to use it on the metal and it's not what I want. Okay, if I can find a way to use it someday, I will let you know, but so far I have not. Oh, Donna has brought some out to show us with the Perfect Pearls. Um, this is... Um, this, this is the one you mentioned, the um, metallic. Yeah, this is the trans interference yeah, set, and then you which mentioned is the that. pale colors. I use this one a lot. Yeah. And then, uh, you know, painters use interference colors a lot. Kate was explaining this to me, and I'm not sure that I get it entirely. I just like these colors. And they're very Mother of Pearl-like. And they're really good for your shabby, chic type books. Um, this one is the metallic set. So you get a couple of brushes, and you get the perfect medium, and then you get um, you get a pearl, you get a gold, you get a, a bronze, copper, and whatever that is. Let's see. Oh, perfect pearl, perfect gold, perfect copper, perfect bronze. That's what you get. Okay, but no cappuccino, you got to buy that separately. And I do have a big shipment of it coming in. It was an instant hit. I'm not sure if there's any at the site right now, but I was hoping it was going to come today. It didn't, but it will. It'll be here presently. Anyway, let's get back to the subject. How did I do this? This is one I did today that looks a lot like this. I torched this first. And we have a couple of videos about using a micro torch to create patina. This one I got kind of close to, so you'll get kind of some rainbow effects when you do that. If you stay farther away with your torch, you just kind of get a toasty effect on the base like this one, like the lady. Okay, so you can kind of see some of the rainbow popping out through here on her, not so much. Okay, but these were both torched first. Let me take this out of the way because this is last week's news. <laughs> okay, so this one was torched first. Okay, this one was actually not torched first. Not a lot of difference. The only thing I can say is that this looks kind of more like our old chocolate kiss because it's got that bronzy copper coming up through from the rainbow hues that the torch raises. Um, I don't know if you can see any of them on the back. A little bit. You see some green. Um, this was just raw brass. Now be sure, i got to say this, be sure before you start to work with raw brass wherever you get it, and I do hope you will check out our supply at bsuperteaks.com. I love to do the virtual classes for you, and it makes me so happy when you patronize us. Um, but anyway, the point is be sure that you degrease it. Very, very important. How do you do it? Very simple. Hot water, a little bit of Dawn dishwashing liquid, and just clean it up a little bit with a stiff brush, rinse it off really well, and dry it super well. Because what happens, and I've talked about this before, is when the dyes meet when the stuff is being made, um, they use a lot of machine oil to keep those dyes functioning and working well. So it comes off on the brass and it's not something you want on there if you're trying to you know put your own colors and stuff it's gonna mess with it okay so get that off of there first degrease number one okay to get these colors I'm just gonna show you a few more that I did and then I'm gonna demonstrate this one was torched first this is um let's see 
This is FIG 05022. No, no, this one is. I'm sorry, that's going to mess you all up, Javi. <laughs> the wings are FIG 05022. She just gave me a little sick smile. <laughs> this is FIG 0631, the grapes and the leaves, okay? And uh, this is really cool, too, because you can ma manipulate those leaves, okay? Um, this, I use the, the um, wings again. I'll take this off. You can see the difference between this one and this one. And this, again, is the FIG 05022. She's going to explode. <laughs> and I tried with this one to make it look a little bit more rosy, but not shabby chic light. So what I did was I did primer this first. So I wanted to see what it looked like with the darker colors over top of the primer. So, so I took my steel wool and I buffed it back <clears throat> and then I used the cappuccino. I used the super bronze color, perfect bronze color, and then I used a little bit of the interference red which is really this pretty pretty pink that we talked about in other videos. Now, how do I get this on? Well, I can use my perfect medium pad. I prefer the big one. Our shipment is just about to land. I, again, I was hoping it was today. Probably be Monday. Um, you can ink it up with this. Or, something else that I found, and I don't have this in stock yet, but I will soon. Maybe some of you who do scrapbooking already have it. Is this Stampendous clear embossing ink because you can just ink up the degreased finding or you can, I don't know if you can see, just get it on a plate and work with it and use your brush and dip it in that way too. I'm going to show you how, so don't worry about it. But this, I'm, I'm actually really liking this stuff. And I'm sad that I don't have any to share with you just this minute, but I will very soon because I'm, I'm really, really liking this stuff for working with the Perfect Pearls because it makes the colors kind of run into each other. So you're going to need, you don't really need any tools for this. Um, just some, maybe some of these little spongy brushes, things, and the fine steel wool, the quadruple aught, zero, 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 four, no, what is zero, no, four zeros, yeah, four zeros, steel wool. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe some Q-tips might be good. I like some little buff rags. Cut up an old t-shirt, something. Um, some disposable um, paintbrushes. Actually, I could wash these out though, so they wouldn't have to be disposable. But anyway, it's just a thought to do this. Okay, so um, let's do something together. Okay, let me move these out of the way. Let's do something here. What do I have? I have this. Oh, this, this would be good. Let me stand up to do this. This is this really pretty finding. We have a lot of these too right now. It's um, the corn, double cornucopia. You can drill it out here and here to make a necklace. I've used it before to great success too. And it is FIG 09328. I'll put all these, these SKUs in the... Um, in the description and then Javi has just found a way here last week to make them clickable so if you click on them it should take you right to the site you can put it in the cart and save it and come back to the video the only way that it wouldn't come up is if we've run out of them so if you click it and you don't get anything it means we ran out of it already okay but that doesn't mean we won't get more all right so inking it up all right I'm gonna go with the Stampenda sink on this so what I'm gonna do I could take it from my plate but I think I'm just going to get her on there. And you can see it's, it's coming out, you know, in good amount. But this will allow me to let the perfect pearls mesh and flow. And I'm going to take a little bit off because I got a little bit too much. But I can always add a little bit more. I'm going to use my brush. And, of course, you want to be careful that you're not um, contaminating your pearls. But I haven't done too much contaminating yet. So it's worked out okay. Um, I'm going to use the cappuccino, just get a little bit on my brush, and I'm just going to start swirling it around. 
think I need it actually to have left a little bit more on. But you know what? I have my stuff over here too. I can dip it on my plate and get it to flow a little bit more. Just lightly dip. Don't get your brush down in there too much because you don't want to get it full of embossing ink. You could even spill a little bit out. In fact, you know what? I think I might. I hope I don't get too much because I'll be using a bit of this. And then that way, yeah, just spill, maybe spill a little bit out. And then that way you're not sticking your brush down in there and wrecking it. Okay, so I'm putting it on. And you may have to do, you know, you may have to do several layers of this. But I just love the rich color of it. This piece was very light, lightly torched, too, by the way. Very lightly torched. Okay. And you might wonder, why did I have to talk so long before I started to show you this? People have commented about that. It's because there's stuff you need to know. Okay. I'm sorry. I don't like these videos where people just jump in, start doing stuff, and don't set it up. Don't tell you anything. Don't tell you what you need, what might happen, blah, 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 blah. I'm very, very thorough. So when you come to YouTube to see my videos, you are getting a virtual class, okay? So if you took a class that you paid for and your teacher only gave you five to ten minutes of her time and half of the information was left out, how would you feel? Would you like that, Donna? I'd feel cheated. Yeah, because you know what? Your time is precious. And somebody commented about that. My time is precious to me. That was a long time ago I saw that and I'm like it made me think because I'm like okay how am I leaving these people down and I thought well I'm sorry I need to tell you everything about it so if you don't have time to watch it all right now so take notes don't you take notes in a class I do take notes come back stop the video do what you gotta do so I just wet this again. I just keep going back over it. So when you're buffing that, Brenda, mm -hmm. are you rubbing that, trying to get that finish rubbed into that? A little bit, yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And then I'm going to take and just get a little bit of this bronze in there, and it kind of adds a highlight. Yeah, sorry, and it's, it's very different than paint, and you know, it, but it comes out with a different look, a softer look, a more... I don't know, just a richness, but the final touch, the final trick to doing this is when it's dry, and I can't show you this because I can't be doing spray paint in here, but the final trick is when you do the final sealant, which should be matte spray lacquer, and I like the Krylon brand, by the way, um, but any will work. I just happen to like that. Then... Um, you kind of have to get up close and on it and let it pool and then it will just make it all run into each other and that's your final trick and then it may take a while to dry because it's really thick on there you may take you 24 hours you may even want to take your rag when it's wet with that and buff it out and I wish I could show you but the only way we could do that is to go outside and I just didn't figure out quite how we could make that happen with moving the tripod and the camera around and the whole nine yards so basically you guys know how to spray paint stuff just go up close on it and let it run that's nice to know yeah and that's how it'll work okay now I'm gonna take a little bit more and get in there and basically it's just a series if you like to play with color if you like to experiment then this is for you. If you just want to get her on there and you just don't want to mess around, then this this technique may not be with you for you. But it's not going to take you as long as say like if you're trying to raise patina using vinegar and salt in an oven, that's going to take you all afternoon. But that has its own fun thing because you raise verdigris. So now I've got my white buff rag, and I'm trying to get some of the graininess off in there. But I'll just keep going back over it, and then of course I'm going to want to give some attention to the back of this too okay so you could take and you could spray paint it with some primer first if you want or you could use this on there and do the same thing on the back this isn't finished if you don't do the back okay not in my opinion and finishing is nice another thing you could do if you don't want to color it is you could get some ultra suede and cut it out and glue it to the back and yes these 6000 will work very nice for that so you just lay that on this ultra suede trace around it cut it trim it Glue her on there, 
That'd and that'd be, that'd be a very nice thing. Now, so I've got this basic color on. Now I'm just going to take my fingers and kind of rub it in. Now it's really getting rich. Okay? But the more you put this on, the more embossing ink you use, the more you're going to get a Choxy color. Okay? So you have to keep going for it. But also, too, if you get really super a lot of this embossing powder on it, this Perfect Pearls, which is embossing powder, and then you hit that with your spray lacquer. After you let this sit for a while, then it's going to make it run. And that's when it gets uber cool. That's what I did on all of these pieces. All of these pieces. You see, you can see the difference between these two. This is all filled in. See? That's because it's the, the matte spray lacquer on top that ran. Mm -hmm. Okay, and then, you know, once that dries, you can, you can even uh, buff that back. You can distress that again. In fact, this lady, when I did her and she was all dried, I took uh, this rag and just buffed that out and got a shine on it. And that's all nice now, too. So that's another thing you can do. So this is basically how I do that. Okay, now this isn't done by any means, but I'm just showing you the process, and it's just basic layers. Say, say for example, um, you wanted to add a little bit of patina to this. Um, I'm going to get me a little bit of this ink to smash it on there. Okay, you might want to do that. I'm going to just dump a little bit of this out because I don't want to contaminate it. Are you able to? Is this coming on camera, Javi? I hope it is. So it's not off camera. Okay. Whoops. That's okay. Some got on it. Well, that's okay because we're going to put some on it. Okay. I'm going to get a little bit of my embossing ink and I'm going to pick a little bit of this up. And I'm going to put a little bit of green in it to like make like a verdigris color. Now, this isn't showing up so good because I had that. That's the same one as I did the uh, cappuccino on. So maybe I'll get a clean brush. Or you could use a lighter color like the Interference um, Green, which is kind of a light minty one. And you could get it on like that. Kind of got to play with it. Sometimes it wants to take another color real easy. Finishing touch is when you matte spray lacquer it. Maybe we'll put this aside and I'll talk a little bit about these other filigree over here and then I'll take this out and matte spray lacquer it. We'll stop the camera and come back and come back and I'll show you what happened, okay? Because I kind of feel like I'm cheating you not to do that. I can't show you in here because it just doesn't work out, but I could go out and do it and bring it back in. See, now this has got a lot of green in it and that's going to be really cool. And that's finished. And I could even take and add a little of this pink on those roses. That's what I would like. That's what I was kind of talking about. Add a little color like that. How's that look? It looks really good, I think. i put a little bit in the middle for balance. And then rub it out with metal. my fingers. Maybe put a little bit up here. Are you guys liking this yet? Uh, I think you probably are. Are, are, are. You can just take this in so many different directions. Yes, you can. That's, and that's the point. See, now we've got a totally different look now. So I'm going to put this aside, and then uh, we'll stop the camera in a little bit, and I'll run out, and I'll spray paint it and bring it back. Um, I'm going to set this aside because I want to show you one more thing here. Okay. Now, we talked a little bit about Russian gold-plated brass. Okay. This is a piece of my old Russian gold plate. And all it is, is our satin matte gold, which this is a satin matte gold, okay, with a brown antique on it, okay? This is an 18 karat gold precious metal finish. That's why it costs more. So if you can learn to do it with raw brass, that's cool because you save some money, okay? But if you want to get it more like this, then you may want to use the satin matte gold. Now, this piece, I don't have this 
anymore in a satin mackerel or anything. This is an old piece that I had that I kept in my own stash, but I wanted to show you. And you can see the little brown highlights and all the crevices. But this is a piece of the old Russian gold plate, which I was very sad to have to discontinue. And ever since then, I've been trying to figure something out. Okay, so the next piece that I'm going to show you is a piece of satin matte gold that I put cappuccino on. Now, you can see the difference. And it's pretty close to the old stuff. Pretty close to the old stuff. You know what I'm going to do tomorrow, if I get time, I'm going to do a blog post so I can get some yeah. up-close pictures I so that you can good. see it, you know, off of my hand and on a white background. Um, but anyway, once again, this is the satin mat. This is the old Russian gold plate. This is satin mat with cappuccino on it, made to look like. The old Russian, you guys, a little bit different, it's a little bit richer, but you know, I'm still working on it. Okay, now this piece is raw brass, raw brass, no color. See, the number would be FIL 03040, in the satin mat, it is SMG 04482. This would be much cheaper because that 18 karat gold, well, let's face it, 18 karat gold. It is really 18 yeah. karat gold in the bath. It's going to cost more, okay? So this this would be cheaper. This, I did a little torching on it first. And then I started adding the cappuccino and a little bit of the bronze. So that was the look. And it's kind of got a really cool renaissance old gold I, look I to like that. them all. Yeah. It depends what yeah. you're making. But is that like coming up all. good on there? And you're so gonna... you can see the difference. This one's lighter. That's more airy, more like the old Haskell look. If you're going for that, then that's what you'd want. Okay, now this was uh, matte spray painted by a primer white, mm -hmm. distressed back. And then I added the cappuccino and then the perfect gold and a little of the perfect bronze, buffed it back and sealed it. So that's a completely different, it's a little bit grayed down, a little bit shabby. Mm -hmm. chic type look so if you like that look but not you don't want a white white you know yeah you'll put the dark stuff over the top then you'll get that okay so those are the difference the shabby the torch the raw brass no this is a satin mat this is a satin mat with the cappuccino this is plain satin mat and this is the old Russian roll so we're going to stop the camera for a minute I'm going to take this outside and, and put the spray lacquer on it and I'll bring it back in and show you and then we'll be done for today. So I'll Where be right back. I'll be right back. Okay. So I just spray painted this and it's really kind of wet yet. Okay. But you can see how everything kind of ran together. And that's what you want. And the thing is is when this dries, you can distress it even more. Buff it out with your rag. And you can add more. You can add more. A, a good way to do it after you have, if you've yeah. got some spray lacquer on, is to use this stuff instead of the stampendus because this is lighter, and it'll still stick real good. And then you could just add some more color and, and buff it out, distress it, and get it to. It's like your custom finish. And then when you get something that you really love, get a notebook and write it down. I did this. I did this. I did this. Just I did like this. Just like a recipe. Right. Just like a recipe. And then that way you'll be able to duplicate it any number of times. Okay. So that's pretty much it for today. I hope that I've provided you some stuff that gives you something to think about and to have some fun. And uh, try it, you know, get, get some perfect medium and, and some perfect pearls and raw brass and just go to town and have fun. I'm going to keep working on this one. And remember, you got to do your backs too. So if, you're, if you didn't spray paint it or torch it dark, because that kind of finishes it, then you got to do something to the back too. Okay? So next week, I think we're having Katie Oskin. Oh, that'll be nice. Yeah. And I'm not sure what Katie's going to bring or do, but if, if it all works out for Katie to come, we're doing Paul and the Clay okay. next week. So hope to see you next Friday. You have a sparkling week. And try some of this stuff out. Come over to bsuboutiques.com and get yourself some stuff. Uh, this is the week of the $200 free mixed media muse. Today is September oh, wow. 19th. 
2014, which means do you have from right now till noon on Saturday, Eastern Standard Time to get an order in because all the orders will qualify by number to win perhaps that $200 mixed media muse. I've got pictures of it on the Brenda Sue Lansdowne page. I've got it on the Bisa Boutiques page. I've got it in the Bisa Boutiques creative group, which you're welcome to come and join us. Uh, come and have a look at it because it is so chock full of stuff and it's the biggest muse ever and it's because this is our grand opening week. So it's all official now, so come and see if you win and you have a great week. Thanks.